Ah, howdy folks, I'm Brian and here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for getting mad about my wife's dressing addiction and then throwing a bunch away? Okay, this is super weird and I know that I never thought I would have to post something like this. My wife is a fan of simple foods, stuff like light soups, salads, pasta dishes, etc. Originally, she wanted to make her own dressing for salads and pastas, but I guess she found it to be too much work and started buying a variety. It wasn't too bad at first. She starts off with two, one for her salads and one for her pastas, but gradually starts building up. Right now, we have two side drawers full of different dressings. I'd say there's over 20. I tried to talk to her about it gently a few times, but she always kind of brushed it off as just dressing and she likes to have variety. Well, last night, she came home... <laughs> horror of all horrors. Not the salad dressing addiction. What will you do? This is almost as bad as those drugs that those kids are always talking about. Well... Last night, she came home with two more dressings, and I finally snapped, and I told her that she needs to control her weird dressing addiction, because this is seriously getting out of control. She got mad at me for calling it weird, and then said there was nothing wrong with having a variety of stuff that she uses nearly every day. Well, I had enough, and she went to bed, so I started cleaning out the fridge, and I threw a majority away. Needless to say, she was mad when she woke up. She ended up leaving to her parents and won't answer my calls or texts. I called her mom, who called me controlling and told me just to leave her alone. Now I'm wondering, seriously, am I a jerk? Well, OP, I think that, um, you know, dressing addiction is a serious problem. And, you know, this intervention of yours was probably something that just needed to be done. I mean, not everyone can just control their dressing addictions and, you know... You were concerned about her, I'm sure, and you came from a place of like, hey, first it's dressing, next thing you know, she's going to be shooting up uh, the hard stuff. So yeah, I mean, I totally can understand this from that point of view, and uh, sure. <laughs> no, on a serious note, I, I think OP is the jerk here, and um, I don't know, like, it's just dressing. Maybe it was excessive amounts of dressing, like 22 dressings is quite a lot, but on the other hand, like... He just kind of basically said that he he basically made the decision for her to get rid of all this dressing. And sometimes in relationships, you're going to have times when you disagree on things. I guess the big problem with this is if it was taking up a lot of space in the refrigerator, then I can understand why he would be frustrated about it. But on the other hand, like... She's, it's just dressing and she has a variety of it. So, I mean, I don't really understand like what the big deal is here. I do think that as a couple, you two need to communicate better and work on setting boundaries and limits and stuff like that and just have a good conversation about what a reasonable amount of variety of dressings are. And some people just like a lot of variety of things and maybe she just gets tired of you know the old dressings and she just wants to try a new one or maybe she wants to try something different maybe also you could convince her to buy smaller sized bottles of dressing when she's trying them that way she doesn't have so many large bottles kicking around yeah so i think there's all kinds of things that you can compromise on here i think that there's a lot of conversations here it doesn't sound like this is the worst com or thing in the world, but it does sound like you're being a little controlling here. It does sound like you are trying to stop her from having things that she likes, and she probably didn't appreciate that. Anyhow, take care and uh, good luck. You're the jerk. Was this impacting your life negatively? Was there not room for your food? I doubt it. And OP says, there's not room for my soda or beer because of it. I can only keep a few in there at a time. You unilaterally decided that she had too many bottles of something, so you got to decide to throw it out without talking to her first. You're the jerk, and completely. She might have too many dressing bottles, but that doesn't mean that you are awarded sole authority over the fridge and can throw them out at will. 
Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for telling my daughter that she already has a full-time job, so why look for another? My daughter is a 31-year-old female, and she's been married to her husband for 10, almost 11 years, and they have a 10-year-old son together. She has everything I've ever wanted for her to have growing up. Her husband is the CEO of a successful business who can take time off work whenever. She also has the opportunity to be a devoted, hands-on mother to her son. While she doesn't work at her husband's business, everybody who works there treats her as though she were their CEO. Her husband has said numerous times that he values her advice and that she can always tell him, why don't you just take this approach? She pretty much had it all. However, now, all she does when my grandson leaves at 8 is launch herself into a bunch of frenzied and scattered passion projects. One day, she's studying to get a real estate license, and the next, she's off shadowing an insurance agent. She'll ask if I can babysit and then go over to a mutual friend's house to get paid $25 an hour, way below the market rate, to strategize a marketing campaign for their brand. For the past few months, she's been simultaneously studying for a real estate license in hopes of landing a job at a local family business. The job, if she got it, would require her to work from the hours from around 9.30 to 3 p.m., and that has caused a lot of trouble with her husband, who says she already has a full-time job as a mom and that his company is their company. He doesn't get why she would go from de facto CEO of his company to the bottom of the heap at another company. My daughter has never worked before, and I think she idealizes it. But when I was a working mom, it was an absolute mess to juggle the two things that she's in a position now where she doesn't have to. The three of us got into an argument over this yesterday when her husband asked me what I thought of this, and I just couldn't hold back. I told my daughter that she was infinitely more powerful at her husband's company where in visiting him, she could walk into any meeting room and have her opinions heard. But she had the flexibility to leave at any time if she needed to be with their son. Her husband agreed with me and said that her words have an effect on him and make an impact on his company. And in that sense, it makes it her company too. And there's a lot of fulfillment to be had in that. I said that basically being co-CEO and having a hand in educating their son to become a great future adult is already a full-time job she signed up for, and she should be grateful for how fortunate she is. My daughter said that she heard enough. She said that it would be a gross misrepresentation to write that she has acted as a CEO of her husband's company on her resume. She said that she was drooling with boredom and no purpose at home, and she can't stand it anymore. Am I a jerk? Yes. Um, here's the thing. is like, your daughter is bored. She doesn't want to be the stay-at-home mom anymore. Her son is 10 years old. He's in school most of the time and needs little guidance. And it sounds like she wants to do something outside of her husband's shadow. And if she's so valued by her husband's company, then her husband should start paying her as an employee and so that she can actually put something on her resume. So I think all of her things... All of her points here are quite reasonable. She doesn't want to do this. She wants to secure a future and she wants to be able to build up her own career. And by you not supporting her in her goals, you're kind of holding her back. So my suggestion here would be stay out of her business and support your daughter. And also her husband should be supporting her and her goals and endeavors. And she is right. In the end, it would be disingenuous for her to write that she was a CEO on her resume. And that's just it. Like, there isn't going to be any way for her to use this work experience to help her further her career. And you might argue, well, she doesn't have to. Well, you don't know that. They might not be together forever. And maybe she doesn't want to be dependent on her husband forever. Maybe she likes the independence of having her own money and her own way and her own way and her own wages and everything like that. Maybe she feels trapped in the respect that if she wanted to leave her husband, then what would she do? She would have no choice but to, you know, for instance, take alimony. And that might not be enough to support her. So who really knows? Anyhow, I, again, would support your daughter, and I would encourage her, and yeah. 
So anyhow, take care and good luck. You do realize that no matter what respect or attention that she gets at her husband's company, it's still his company, right? Not her. She's the CEO's wife there. Maybe she wants to accomplish something without feeling like she needs her husband to get there. It is, ultimately, your daughter's life to live. Of course she has obligations to her husband and her child, but your dreams are not hers. And it sounds like you've never had the full stay-at-home lifestyle experience, and you're idolizing that. You're the jerk, and this is between her and her husband. It's nice that you think your daughter has it made, but you don't get to decide what she wants in her life. Yeah. Our last letter is titled, Am I a jerk for calling BS on the flowers that my husband sent me? I'm a 27-year-old female, and my husband is a 30-year-old male, and he bought me flowers maybe six times in our eight-year marriage. He's not much of a romantic guy. He knows I like flowers, and I have gently nudged him a few times a year as a reminder. He will say okay, but always forgets or gets too busy. It was never a big deal, though, not a deal-breaker. He never argued about it or anything. It was just one of those things that I hoped that I would get sometimes. I told him that I was going to start buying flowers for myself, and he said it was fine. The end of last year, I was a bit depressed, overwhelmed, and just not feeling mentally okay. Rona, three kids, virtual learning, working full times, you know, the usual 2020 stuff. The holidays were coming up, so I figured why not make myself feel better and buy myself some flowers to brighten my mood. I chose delivery for the following week and I knew that I'd forget about it. So I would be a little surprised from the flowers sent for me. Sure enough, the following week I forgot and it was nice to see the flowers as a little reminder for myself that everything was okay. It sure made me feel better. So later that day, my husband comes home from work and immediately looks at the flowers with a puzzled look. He instantly demanded to know who sent me his flowers. I chuckled because I thought it was a little cute that he got jealous for a moment. I happily told him that I sent them to myself to cheer myself up. He knew I was feeling down and was also trying to help. I didn't know what type of reaction I was expecting because to me, it's just flowers, right? Nothing expensive. $20 on a popular app that you buy stuff at group rates. No harm, no foul. Wrong. My husband was upset at me and yelled at me. I was shocked and confused and was trying to figure out how I was wrong to buy myself something to help me with my mental state. He said that I should have told him first that I was thinking about buying flowers for myself because before I actually bought them and that he had been thinking about it for all of a week. Flowers to arrive on Friday. He said that he told his best friend all week, you know, that I think I'm going to buy my wife some flowers. So come on Friday, he arrives home and sees flowers already. He's upset that I beat him to it. We argued about it with me defending myself and he trying to defend his reasoning. Argument went nowhere and so we just dropped it. Oh wait, wait, wait. He was thinking about buying you flowers all week. And he said that they were going to come in on Friday. And um, my question is... Where are these magic flowers? Why did he come home empty-handed if he was going to buy you flowers? There's there's, there's a hole there. I'm not really sure where that logical hole is, but I think there's one there. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think there's a hole in his logical reasoning? Or, um, I don't know. Last week, I was scrolling on my phone and saw a deal on some flowers. So I said out loud, Oh! My husband looks over and asks what I was ooing at, and I tell him some flowers. I think I might buy them for myself. He said that he will get them for me, and I tell him, no, it's okay, and walked away. I didn't buy them for myself because I already reached my spending limit for the week, so I was going to buy them for the following week. Today, I get a delivery of flowers. Not shocking, it's from my husband, and the note says, thinking of you. I think this is BS. He wasn't thinking of me. He only got me flowers because I said I was going to get them for myself again. I did say thank you to him, but I told him I call BS. So am I the jerk? Edit. Let me clarify that one, I never nagged or complained about it. I simply would remind him nicely a few times a year 
about how I wanted flowers. Two, I called BS on the card. It said, thinking of you. I called BS because it wasn't like he had some random thought to buy me flowers and did. I was going to buy them for myself again and told him so. Three, I didn't ooh over the flowers on purpose. I can laugh at my phone, giggle, or make any noise, and my husband will ask me what's funny or what I'm looking at. Nothing wrong with that. I could have kept my opinion to myself and just smiled, but my husband didn't marry that type of woman. He knew he married a woman who speaks her mind and he loves it. He wasn't mad that I called BS. And four, yes, I do buy him equivalent of flowers at least one time monthly, sometimes more if I see he's had a hard week. Man crates, edible arrangement, novelty things he likes, little love notes in his wallet or car. All right, OP. I'm probably going to have to say that you're not the jerk. It seems like in the end, he did only buy the flowers as a reaction. And I am still debating whether or not that would be thoughtless or not. <sighs> the trouble is this. like, If you remind him to buy you flowers or something like that, does it have really that much more thought than in this case? And my answer would be probably not. So this isn't really too much more different than what you've done before. He knew you were feeling down, and he probably felt bad that he didn't get you flowers last time you were feeling bad. And so he wanted to rush out and get you flowers. So I still think that there's some thought there. I don't think that this was completely thoughtless on his part, but I do think that he could have been more spontaneous with it. So, yeah, I mean, I guess this is just really kind of an opinion about what constitutes being thoughtful or not. Some people might agree that he was being you know, thoughtless, and some people might think that he was being more thoughtful than that. In the end, I mean, he did get you flowers, and flowers did arrive to surprise you. And so if in the end, if you got flowers and you like them, I don't know what the big deal here is. So I will say that probably him lying to you, it seems like he was lying to you at first when he said that he was thinking about buying you flowers and that he was just going to buy them for that Friday. Because that doesn't seem to make much sense given that he came home without flowers. I mean, again, if he had um, brought home flowers that day, then you probably would have been ecstatic and been like, oh, I got two sets of flowers. So, yeah, I don't know. He's probably feeling a little bad that he didn't get you flowers and he really does want you to be happy, it sounds like. And so I don't think that this is completely thoughtless on his part. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. So if he was planning to buy you flowers all week, why did he come home empty-handed on Friday? I would just buy yourself flowers whenever you want to. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up. If you didn't, consider giving me a thumbs down. Also, consider saying something in the comments below, like, what's your favorite color? Tell me. Tell me what your favorite color is. I want to hear. Um, <laughs> can you guess what my favorite color is? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah. So guess what my favorite color is? I'll tell, I'll reveal it in uh, like next week or something like that. If this, if this video gets uh, uh, at least five people to guess what my favorite color is, then I'll reveal it next week. Sure. So, um, also, the Alice in Wonderland stuff is coming. I have to edit that video. I did record it yesterday. I just, or yes, yesterday, but I just haven't been able to edit it. I've had a lot of things on my plate and I'm working on a couple of pro side projects. So time is at a premium for me right now. So yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow.